Okay, so a bit late to the game on this one, but I thought I would get this review out, one, because I'm a Leicester fan, and I've got to, got to get out the victories when I can, and two, I think there's a lot of things that happen beneath the surface within this game that were of particular note. Um, <coughs> obviously, the, be, the, big, the big story in this game is uh, scrums and lineouts and set dominance, set piece dominance wins games, and uh, that definitely happened. Uh, Joe Hayes, James Cronin, both played fantastically. Both had complete set piece dominance, uh, especially at scrum time. Uh, I'd like to take a second to say that I've mentioned this in previous videos, but Joe Hayes' improvement this season has been nothing short of superb. I've always thought he was a bit of a weak link at Leicester. Young guy, uh, a lot of room to, for development, but always was always felt more comfortable when Dan Cole was on the pitch. Uh, just felt like when Joe Hayes came on, he was a bit of a liability at scrum time. Sometimes he was fine, sometimes he would get completely screwed, uh, and there was never really any consistency in his play, or massive spikes of dominant play where he would dominate in the scrum. I felt like the door opened on me, that was creepy. But this year, there have been two games in particular where I think he's really shown his mettle, uh, and this is one of them. Uh, he played really, really well. I was actually annoyed he came off with 20 minutes to go with how dominant the scrum was. Um, it was such an advantage. Maybe we would have gotten the, the four tries that we needed if we still had the same advantage in the last 20 minutes of the game. Um, but we didn't, and I, I don't think there's a whole lot you can complain about as a Leicester fan here. So that's really just kind of trying to cross T's and dot I's. But yeah, I mean, uh, both of them... Cronin is known for being very good, but Joe Hayes was particularly good in the scrum, uh, and that ultimately meant that any knock-on just turned into a penalty for Leicester. Um, you could see that in the penalty advantage between the two teams. I think uh, we, we were looking at 60 minutes, and Saracens were about 10 or more penalties, Leicester were about three, and the scrum had a huge part to do with that. Now, not to hark on too much about what, what was obvious about the game. Let's talk about what's a little less obvious about the game. And I think that both teams came out with very particular game plans and uh, Leicester's game plan almost uh, kept them upright in terms of uh, in the game because uh, I didn't think they looked particularly uh, awake or alive for the first 20 minutes of the game. They looked like they were losing a physical battle. And I think Saracen's game plan, although I could see the sense in it, I think it was ultimately their downfall. Um, so just getting into Saracen's and what I saw personally in that, Saracen's uh, decided they wanted to play a possession game. You could see that from the get-go. They were willing to play out of their 22 multiple times. And this actually resulted in one of the tries for Leicester, where Dan Kelly had a an interception try um, because it was within the own half of Saracens when they were trying to attack. And uh, I don't know if you can really question that game plan too much. It's obvious that Saracens were trying to do that because of Leicester's strength in their back three in terms of their fullback and their two wingers, right? Great under the high ball, and both the wingers are also uh, very good at counter-attack. And Freddie Stewart also looked very good in counter-attack, although he's not known for that massively. Uh, he was great at taking uh, high balls and actually running back with them. So uh, I can understand why Saracens did that. But the problem was is that I think their execution was just a little bit off. I've talked about the interception try already. Um, that, was, that was a lack of execution. That was throwing a pass that should never have been passed in the first place. But there were points where Saracens looked really, really strong in attack. And... And I know the commentary said this, so it must be a more well-known fact, but um, Saracens looked really good off first phase. Set pieces, uh, plays where everyone's sucked in, so just like a scrum and line out. They have some really nifty moves, uh, and especially with one of their tries. Can't remember who scored it, scored it specifically, but I'll try and show the highlight on the left-hand side of the screen here. It was two lines of attack, uh, Owen Farrell is the pivot point. He drops a pass straight into Daly right at the right point and he breaks through the line. I don't know if it, it was Daly who scored off the top of my head or if he passed it to someone else for the score, but it was a really, really well-worked move. And um, it was 
some more line-out moves that I've been seeing in the World Cup, specifically using the scrum half as an uh, extra fly half uh, to give yourself a, an extra amount of advantage. Having two attacking lines where you've got one that's uh, this bird's eye view here. I don't want to just be like moving my arms around so it doesn't make any sense. But you got <clears throat> you got basically got a fly half, and you got one that the attacking in the, the the attacking line that's uh, in front of the other is more going on the inside, trying to create decoys and suck men in. And you've got another attacking line with faster guys going from the outside. And at that point, when it reaches Farrell, he's got a choice. He's got a choice of whether he goes for the front attacking line or he goes for the back attacking line. He saw the, he saw the opportunity on the outside. He gives it to Daly, who's looping around the outside, and he takes advantage of the space. Now, this is why I love rugby union compared to rugby league. Set pieces such as lineouts and scrums not only are interesting battles within themselves, but they offer opportunity to bring a large amount of players into a nucleus on the field and that allows moves like this to happen it, it, it allows space to happen it allows um backs to have what first phase uh space that they can use and i realize i've just kind of said the same thing three times over but you get what i mean this is why i and i guess why you probably love rugby union over rugby league as well so that was great i can't blame saracens for that but i think when it didn't work, they needed to pivot a little bit more. Uh, they needed to change what their game plan was, maybe play for territory a little bit more. Um, but at the same time, you know, you can argue that, but they were getting dominated at the set piece. So what would be the point in kicking for a line out? I, th I think they had a couple of line outs at least that I saw that were stolen by Leicester. What, what would be the point of doing that? What would be the point of trying to force a knock on under the high wall to Leicester when you know you're going to get a penalty against you? Ultimately, the message for me for this game was that... Um, penalties are, you know, they trump handling errors. Because the other note from this, and, you know, it was obvious for everyone who watched the game, Leicester's handling errors were just out of control. Uh, I counted at least at least five occasions where really promising attacking moves were ruined by someone's buttery hands. So... That's something that Leicester are going to have to work on over the next couple of weeks because that's just for a game that was must win. It's inexcusable to have that. Really, um, you, you can't have such a simple thing be your crux of, of of your team and the problem, the main problem with your team. Um, it's got to be fixed for next week. The important thing is Leicester won, um, and uh, as I was saying, they got away with it because handling errors are uh, penalised less than being penalised at the scrum and at line-outs. Uh, and ultimately, that meant that Leicester won the game because of that. Um, I honestly thought with all the handling errors I was seeing that Leicester were throwing away the opportunity that they have. This is a, this. There is no doubting about this. This was a must-win game for Leicester looking at the table. This puts them within, I think, four or five points of fourth place now. There's not many games left, obviously, with only 10 teams in the Premiership. There aren't many opportunities left to... Uh, get into that top four and get into the playoffs. And you really need to beat teams that are above you to start to climb the table. Uh, and a lot of the games that we've got coming up, are we, Leicester, uh, are again, there, there's a couple of teams that we're above that we're playing. So like Gloucester uh, we're playing, um, Newcastle we're playing, and that's like two of the eight games that we've got left. So really important win. Uh, keeps us in contention. The dream's not over, the hope's not over. Um, but we'll see how we go. Uh, that's it for me. Oh, actually, I didn't talk about Leicester's game plan. Leicester's game plan, because they, as I said, they didn't look very awake at the beginning of the game, was clear of uh, kick for territory, uh, keep the opposition in their own half, and trust in the defence a little bit. Now, this started to break down, I think, in the second half where we got some tired legs, but it kind of really counteracted Saracen's uh, possession-style rugby. Um, and I don't know if this style of rugby is really going to work against really attack-heavy teams. But then again, there's not evidence that Leicester would want to do the same thing against attack-heavy teams. I'm thinking about the game against Northampton a few weeks ago where they really handled them and Northampton are a very typical attacking team. Uh, maybe this is just a game tactic that they would use against Saracens and, uh, you know, it was just rock, rock versus paper. 
um, and paper ended up coming out on top. So, uh, yeah, I like the direction Leicester are going. Um, they seem to have different game plans for different games, uh, and it seems to be going well. So that's it. That's all I've got left to say. <laughs>